man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right. How's everyone doing? Welcome back. Glad to be here. I have my brother who is soon to join. He has got an empty seat right here. That's why there's an, an empty seat. He'll be here pretty soon. So uh, thank you for your patience. He will. He just ran into some complications. He's about he's on the other side of town. So he's like 25 minutes away, but he'll be here. So you guys won't have to uh, be too sad for long. So while we're waiting, I'm going to check in, see who all is here. I see that we have Tony, or Eli Yahoo. He's one, he does the hangouts with us on the uh, every other weekend, the patron-only hangouts. And his name in his uh, his YouTube name here, Eli Yahoo, seeing that is what helped spark the, um, the uh, connection that we had. Let me go to it real quick. In our last video of Interconnected Word, if you didn't get to see it, where we looked at the connections between the Messiah, Elijah, and Elisha. These connections are extremely powerful. I know that it's a long video, and it seems like, okay, a long video, it's about the Bible, it's going to be boring. I, I recommend you watch it. It's not boring whatsoever. I mean, my tone is kind of boring, but the uh, video itself, the content is really uh, some groundbreaking things that I'd never seen before. You guys may have seen them. And so um, I'm feeling led to do more on a regular basis as far as these types of hangouts where we study the word together and look at connections. This is not me being a teacher and teaching everyone everything I know and all my wisdom, because um, like most of you, like pretty much all of us, it feels like we're starting over. I think somebody said that in the uh, comments earlier, that it feels like we're learning everything again for the first time, especially the word. And so it's good to see everybody here. We've got Mark, Eliyahu, or Tony, both from Canada. That's awesome. You guys should meet up. If you haven't, Mark, if you want to have some really deep conversations about the word, you need to get in contact with Tony. Uh, exchange contact information. Windfeather, Crystal Ball from, he's going to Texas, it looks like, on a bus. How awesome is that? Joining us from there. We got Back to the Covenant. Back to the covenant right there. Matthew Beavers been on here a few times. Many more to come. Tyler. Dang. Look who it is. <laughs> Rico's tinfoil sombrero. The rock star here. Michael. Just trying not to miss anybody. Susan. Milo. A lot of awesome people coming in. So, yeah, thank you guys for joining. I just wanted to go over some stuff and get some input from you guys about the lie, like it says in the old Disney cartoon, a tale as old as time, this Belle and the, and the Beast, or Beauty and the Beast. I had no clue that her name is actually another form of that name, Baal or Belle. Some, mostly, most people say Belle, it's easier to say. Um, <clears throat> the false god that was leading the children of Israel astray for so long, continually so, I believe, and that's why I feel like it's important to study this stuff and understand what it was that these people of the past were falling for and why it was the father had to use people like Elisha and Elijah and his beloved son, Moses, bringing people out of Egypt and out of Babylon, like it talks about in Revelation. A lot of you guys are uh, familiar with that verse, calling us out of Babylon and as my wife always says, it seems like that's what's happening right now. We're getting called out of Egypt and out of Babylon. Somebody said, no shout out. Who is this? White Lamborghini. <laughs> Sorry. I am uh, reading from a distance. I would get much closer, but I don't want to scare away the children. Um, white Lamborghini goes <laughs> skirt, skirt. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, 
Kodesh Ministry is here also from Ontario. How cool is that? Canada, under all of the persecution they have experienced, seems to have triggered an awakening. It's people waking up and saying, hey, we do not want to be persecuted anymore. How cool is that? Yeah. So, uh, again, waiting on my brother to get here. I will, I will go ahead and start a little bit without him. The reason I invited him is because a lot of the things I'm seeing now he had talked to me about previously, and it blew my mind. And so I want to pull from his expertise on this. He has studied what it means, the wickedness in high places. He actually had a video on his channel called Wickedness in High Places. And uh, I forgot to leave a link to his channel in the description. But uh, it's Grace and Truth Fellowship. If you don't know, you probably won't be able to find it with the censorship the way it is. Click on, uh, go to our final card video. It should be the main video that pops up when you go to our channel. And the final card, that's the video he did that all of you guys say, oh, that's your best video ever. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he likes that because he worked really hard. He worked way harder on that than I do on videos. He worked probably three months or more just late nights, compiling stuff, putting it in order, and has very minimal experience with working on video editing. He's only been doing it for a couple years here and there, putting up teaching. So he had um, a lot of labor put into that one. So thank you guys for sharing it. It has finally passed 100,000 views. And with the shadow ban, that might as, that's like millions. <laughs> if you guys who are experiencing that with us know what we're talking about. So, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and dive back into some of this stuff. A lot of it we, we talked about in our Interconnected Word episode, the spirit and power of Elijah, because it had to do with this, I guess, false god that appeared and was this problem with all these kings coming in because Israel became split. You had Judah and Israel, and they both had to have a king. They wanted a king. Father told them that having a king wouldn't be good, and he told them what would happen. Um, and Samuel sent that message to the people. A lot of you are familiar with that. And the things that the father said would happen are continually happening, to, happening today. But the people of Israel that the father set free, he was their king. They wanted a king, a worldly king, so they could be like everyone else. That's what they wanted. They wanted the uh, worldly wisdom. They wanted to look like everyone else, all these other people who had their cool little, their little um, rulers. And so they got it. And Saul was their ruler. Not good. He ended up doing the things that the father warned them about. He was not the best king. Then along comes David. And the story continues to go on. David's son, Solomon. You hear about the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon did right for the most part. But this guy, like we mentioned in our last video, turned to the false gods of his wives because he had like 700 wives. That is hard to imagine. And he had a few hundred concubines as well. We got wildly unpopular Morgan Cadwell in the audience. Shadow bands. Yes, she is the most shadow band female talent <laughs> on YouTube. Um, she'll put out the, the best videos. I'm talking like the ODD videos that used to get millions of videos back in the day, like that kind of quality. And they will get like a thousand views. <laughs> it is, it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's tough, but you have to, you know, you have to realize you're reaching out of that thousand. If you reach 10 people or even one person, it's worth it. And so keep up the, the good fight, people like you. We need more wise women out there. I'm noticing there's a lot, and what they bring to the table is powerful. And um, my brother wants to do a video about women specifically and some of the misconceptions about their role as far as their voices being heard in, in these last days. I feel like there's been a, an effort to silence half the population. Well, now the entire population um, but when you look at some of the mistranslations and things and false teachings and twistings of the scriptures used to silence women, it's it's mind blowing. And he's got some really good teachings on that. He wants to talk about that. We might talk about it later on um, during during this video. But again, he'll be here probably. Let's see. It's seven oh nine. He said he'll probably get here around seven thirty. So just a little late. Had to have somebody watch his kids. Parents know how that is, but um, let me go ahead and get rid of the uh, oops, get rid of the comments so you guys can see. I'm still figuring out StreamYard, I'm trying to get better at it because it it seems to be a good tool to use for these types of things. Yes, uh, 
Heather said, <laughs> my husband would not want 700 of me. Yeah, that's my wife. You know, we talked about it. I'm like, I don't know how he could do this. Making one woman happy is like your life's mission. And it's really hard. And you really almost, almost, um, it's, it's almost impossible uh, challenge. And uh, the father wants us to love them. That's why he commands us to love our wives. And if you love them, you were going to do right by them. You're not just going to use them as some sort of servant, which is what a lot of people think women are. Their contribution to life is far more powerful in terms of growing the children, feeding them. Like my wife right now, we just had our our fifth child, child number five. He's our fourth boy. And so that just going into the hospital with all these women are going through all of this. It just you don't as you get older, you start to see and appreciate it a lot more. It's what these these women contribute to life is such a blessing. And their love is a lot like the father's love, how he goes through all this pain for us. And yet, no matter what, we've turned our backs on him. When we turn back to him, he picks us up. He loves us. And that is a mother's love. They go through all of this pain, all this long suffering to give birth to their children, to feed them, give them food, just like the father gave the children of Egypt manna from heaven for a long time. I always thought that it was just this short window of time. It was like 40 years or more. I mean, just like feeding them. Your food is brought to you and manna from heaven. And so women, um, wouldn't say it was 40 years of nursing, but a couple years usually of nursing, they're giving you this food for free and they just love you unconditionally, no matter how, how much you take them for granted. All right. We're getting more people joining in. So, um, I will go ahead and get started. I said that a second ago. Sorry. I get a little distracted. Um, let me see if I can get rid of the comment again. But yeah, the title of this video, Bell and the Beast, is that tale or a lie that's as old as time. This is an old lie, but it is rebranded and repurposed. And you'll see um, the connections in uh, just a second. And a lot of them we talked about when we looked at those kings in our, in our last video of Interconnected Word. And people like Elijah was where you see the father's handiwork, because Elisha, or I'm sorry, I get their names uh, uh, crisscrossed, Elijah or Eliyahu. You'll see the significance in the Hebrew form of his name if you watch our Interconnected Word video. Um, but that specific person, the one that we were told in prophecy would come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And then you see that in the New Testament with the spirit and power of Elijah. That character his purpose was to take people and turn them away from the worship of this specific deity or set of deities. As I'm learning that title, Baal or Bel, really means Lord. And there was several versions of this, um, this demon, this power of darkness, whatever he was that was deceiving them. They were mimicking what the father had his children doing. That's what the enemy likes to do. The father likes sacrifice. He wanted people to sacrifice to him or her. Sometimes there's a female version. It gets weird. Um, but these, these powers of darkness, they want you to sacrifice to them. Sacrifice your children, your firstborn, all these different things. They have all these different requirements. You hear about that when you start looking into the powers of darkness. But that was his purpose. There were all these prophets of, of Baal. I think there was, let me see, 450 of them. And... 400 prophets of the groves. Those groves are significant. Many of you have heard about the Bohemian groves. That is the groves that we know of in America. I'm sure there's more of them, but that's the one that we know of um, that gets kind of passed around in the conspiracy circles. People look into that. That's one of the first things I remember seeing is like, wow, these people are still doing this stuff today. It did not go away, but the father uses people like us and like Elijah to turn those people away from them. And that's where trusting him is involved because he was going against a bunch of them. He was outnumbered um, 850. Am I getting the math right? 850 to one. All these prophets, but it gets quite comical when they start crying out to their God to burn their sacrifice. He had this little cook-off challenge where he says, all right, let's set it up. Let's set up a sacrifice if that's what you know you guys like to do. For your false God, we'll see whose God is real, whose father shows up. And just like that pillar of fire at Egypt, 
uh, with the Red Sea crossing where the evidence of that is still there. There's still melted sand. The pillar of fire showed up yet again. And this time it showed up for Elijah and, it's, and it consumed his sacrifice that he had made for the father. Really cool story. Not going to cover that again. That's a, a, a lengthy story. It's worth understanding and looking at again and finding out why why people were doing the things they were doing and why the things that are going on today are going on. But um, let me see what verse I'm looking for. Here it is. Okay. Here is something I, my wife found that in the book of Jubilees, and it is extremely, extremely telling because the father was talking to Moses. This is like another version of Genesis. It goes over a lot of the same things. But he was talking to Moses and t talking about how he knew the people were going to turn from him and do the things they're going to do, but how he would still reveal his mercy and his grace to them. And um, he's talking about the things that they were going to do. And they did do, as you read on in um, the books that follow first and second Kings, especially it says here, and they will make to themselves high places. That's when you hear when you hear about high places, wickedness in high places. That's what it's talking about. And groves and graven images. And they will worship each his own graven image so as to go astray. And they will sacrifice their children to demons. He knew what they were going to be doing. To these people, these are gods. But he's telling them these are the demons, these unclean spirits. The one you read about, the ones in Enoch that you read about. And to all the works of the error of their hearts. And I will send witnesses unto them that I may witness against them, but they will not hear and will slay the witnesses also. And they will per persecute those who seek the law and they will abrogate and change everything as to work evil before my eyes. So that's what these unclean spirits are doing, trying to make the father angry, changing everything, his appointed times, all the different things they can change. They have got their hands in it changing these things and it has been an ongoing mission and that is why we are blessed to see so many of you um, even in the in the comments here that are true soldiers that are sharing the truth about our father his will what he wants for us and how we're supposed to actually live and all the ways that we have been deceived so i'm gonna skip forward here this is another verse uh later on in jubilees i'm not gonna read the whole thing but it talks about those teachings of the watchers, how they came back after the flood. We mentioned this in our Who They Are and Why They Lie series. And so if you want to understand more of that and how those lies returned, this is it. But it has those teachings of the watchers whenever they were branching out and um, the offsprings of Noah or his descendants. It says they had carved their things on these rocks. And so, of course, that would survive a flood. If you're carving these teachings into rock, which is what they did back then, those teachings remained. There's still evidence, things out there that have survived the flood, carvings and rocks that we can see today to know history, pre-flood, as well as post-flood. So that's a really cool, another quick look into that. I'm going to skip forward here because I started looking. I was like, you know, I'm reading about this, this figure. What are these artifacts? What artifacts do we have that remain? Because they had all these hundreds and thousands of prophets of, of Baal, and all of these different temples that they made to him and statues. And sure enough, there are a lot of little statues and they all look extremely similar. They all have their right hand in the air, left hand down, and their left foot forward. If you look at all of them, their left feet are forward. And this particular deity was thought to be the bringer of rain and dew, like fertility, and that's why I think it was significant when Elijah came into the mix. There was this famine for seven years, this drought. And the father actually brought Elijah food. Meanwhile, those people who were sacrificing to Baal, thinking he's going to give them rain, he couldn't. He's an unclean spirit, um, demonic power, deceiving people with limited, very extremely limited powers and things they can do. But just enough to deceive the kings of this earth just like they are now. And uh, here's some more. Again, you just start compiling them. They all look exactly the same, right hand in the air, left foot forward. 
like the ones similar. Now, there's different versions. Here's the one that's in, in Rome that I'd seen a while back, and it has the horns, you know, kind of like looks like an offspring between the, uh, the golden calf that they had in Egypt. But they, they have, I found it uh, very interesting that in the one museum that this thing was located in, I'm not sure if it's the same statue put in the Roman Colosseum or if it's just a copy of that. But if you look at the feet of this statue where people would probably be laying down their infants when they were sacrificing back in the day, this museum has a set of reclining chairs that are red where you just lay back and look up at this thing. I've never seen a display in a museum where they've done that. Of course, I don't go to a lot of museums, but uh, kind of just letting these people who think it's all art go, oh, wow, look, here's a red chair. Let me lay down in it, having no clue the history behind this stuff. And that history starts to become more apparent when you look at modern day statues, things that we thought were so innocent, these light bearing torches that we see with the Statue of Liberty. And sooner or later, <laughs> you do some digging, you find out uh, things like this that we've, we've talked about before, where you have the replica of the Statue of Liberty. It just happens to be older and 1795, when this painting was made, the, and it's actually titled Satan Summoning His Legions. And I saw this, I think it was Maria Abramovich standing in front of the painting with uh, some wealthy guy, I can't remember, one of those evil guys. And um, they were just kind of like grinning, standing in front of that. But it is a copy and paste of the Statue of Liberty and is in the exact same pose, um, almost, not the exact same as other arms raised up over the air, up in the air, but he's got that little staff in his hand like a lot of those uh, statues did. And it's a lot like the Statue of Liberty, which is exactly like a, the statues of Helios in the past. And then I found this interesting. There was a documentary called Hell Satan. And if you look at their cover, they, has, they must have uh, known something that a lot of us didn't know. They have this Baphomet-looking head directly on top of the Statue of Liberty. I didn't know that. I'd never seen that movie don't plan on watching it i know it's it's evil but uh they knew something i'm, I'm sure or they just thought it would be artistic like a lot of people they kind of claim that it's art when later on you figure out it's not exactly what it was so there they are bow and where where the um the satan and bell connection to me became more clear was when i was looking in the book of jubilees i will try to find it um in just a second but uh there they are there's the feet <laughs> you can see the feet of the statue of liberty I, I think it was cut off in the last picture left foot forward right foot backward just like the satan painting this is more of the symbology and the feet also with the feet not only are they just like those statues of bell there's a verse that talks about this it says the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And there it is. Look, the chains. They have a broken chain. How ironic. It's all intentional. The new Colossus, they call it. And here, yet again, I found this interesting. The um, Washington, almost said the Washington Monument. That's not the Washington Monument. We'll look at that here in a second. Um, that's George Washington and his pose, just like that with the obvious, putting that left foot forward, doing the hokey pokey when they were being painted. I don't know. Um, hopefully they turned themselves around. We got uh, same thing here with, with the um, demon Baphomet here. Left foot forward. It's over top of his right foot or hers depending on who you talk to. I think he's kind of trans. Um, now, here's a little bit of uh, description I found about this false god, Bell. It says, the sun god under the general title of Bell, or Lord, was the chief object of worship of the Canaanites. Each locality had its special bell, and the various local bells were summed up under the name of Balaam. So you'll hear that in the Bible when it says Balaam. It's talking about it's summing them up. They usually had them in 
you know, sets of tree triads. You see that in Egypt, Egyptian paintings and stuff all the time and all their statues. They usually have three deities together. But each it says each one had a wife who was a colorless reflection. That'll be interesting here in just a little bit. Um, trying to wait for my brother to get here to go too far. But the um, Babylonian, surprise, surprise, comes from Babylon. Um, Bel Mer Merid Meriduk, I was talking about this. I'm trying to read the word. Tony knows how to say it. He's in the chat. Um, was a sun god, and so too was the Can Bel, whose full title was Bel Shem. I hate saying their names. Um, Lord of Heaven. And so that's a lot like um, some of the stuff we're going to be comparing it to when you look at the superheroes that we have and how they essentially take these characters and get children to worship these things. And I fell victim to that when I was a kid, didn't realize it. But when you see how connected they are to these these characters it'll make a lot of sense i'm going to go over that in just a second i know we're kind of all over the place i'll, I'll go back and can sort of tie this stuff together but um this is in washington dc they put up the arch of bell for the sake of art allegedly my brother showed this to me again that's why i wanted him here he was showing me all this stuff like five years ago and i'm like yeah that's pretty cool whatever I'm not into that i'm into flat earth right now i'm not going to look at uh all this stuff, <laughs> get too deep into it. But um, like we said, it's sun god worship. The sun god worship is why we believed what we believed about the world revolving around the sun or their god, Bel, Helios. It's all interconnected. Tammuz, Nimrod. They have all these different characters that they pull from that just change over time. The name changes, but it stays the same. Kind of like um, the powers of Rome, how D.C. used to be, where the capital sits, was called Rome, Maryland. They still mimic Rome with all of their ways, with the capital and all that stuff. The guy that owned it, like we said before, was called, his name was literally Francis Pope. <laughs> just like Pope Francis. Some of the stuff that just seems uh, too far-fetched. Oops, same picture again. Um, more symbology there. I thought it was interesting that that same deity looks a lot like the Beauty and the Beast, Belle and the Beast character. Here's my bro. He's here. I think I just heard him walk in. There he is. It's okay. You could be late. I'm just talking about you. <laughs> there it is again on the ancient maps. What's up? How's everybody doing? Let's see who we got. Yeah, this is the one you guys always say is um, the better of the two. The better of the two that makes better videos. My clone. He's a little darker than me. He's spent a little bit more time outside lately. Really? Am I darker? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Looks like just a floating head because we got a black background. <laughs> I should change the background so you can see him. <laughs> but yeah, um, I've been cloned. He's the reason why cloning is illegal. Why it was made illegal back in the 80s. You guys probably remember that. Yeah. He's the reason. <laughs> he said I was planned and he wasn't. Yeah. He's seven minutes older than me. There's my little girl making a debut. He's not back here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm going to come back. What did they say? I just missed a comment. I'm a clone back in 2015. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. You have to lock the door to keep that little one out. A little girl. But yeah, we've been, we've been looking at some of the stuff, and uh, I'll go back to the ones. This is one of the first ones he showed me that they re they put up in D.C. So I was going to ask him questions because he he's the reason I got him here was to help help me understand some of the stuff better because he had the video on his channel called Wickedness in High Places, and he wanted me to put it on this channel, and I was like, "Thank God you did." Yeah, it got deleted. <laughs> it actually, got deleted like three years later, which is kind of strange. Yeah, they waited three years, and they were like, "We'll take that down." <laughs> um, once but, you got above a certain amount of followers, it just but took yeah, it, it kind of went. It goes back to I was uh, I was doing a study on the Old Testament actually, and I was doing a, a video. We were doing a series. It was called "Is God Always Good?" And everybody kept commenting on the first one and saying, "Yeah, you keep talking about the New Testament God, but what about the Old Testament God?" So it was like. 
And they started throwing out all these verses of God telling these people to do certain things. And so I started really asking God about why is that? Why, why would God tell everyone to just wipe out a certain part of this, you know, this, this certain tribe or this certain group of people? And uh, when you really look into it, the spiritual side of it, these people were almost, and it's funny because it's, you kind of accidentally stumbled across how it's going on today just by looking into the Old Testament. Because in the book of Kings, you got all these people who keep building this, you know, temple and this altar to Baal and all this kind of stuff. And it was over and over again. Some king would rise up and destroy it, but it kept coming back. And I thought I was reading the same page by accident. I'm like, didn't I just read this? Because it kind of kept happening. And uh, I stumbled across the fact that this arcway that he was just showing in the picture was being paraded. At, at the time I was doing this study, actually, was being paraded around the world. It was being sh shown in these different places, and it was shown in our capital. And the dates that it was being shown there, and they tried to act like it was just art. It was just something on an exhibit, but the day that it was put there would coincide with like the feast of the beast or some really big occult ritual day. It was never just a random day that it showed up and it was never a random day that it just left, uh, which, you know, nothing, nothing kind of surprises us anymore with all this stuff. But uh, yeah, the same stuff they were dealing with in the old Testament, the same, when you listen to testimonies from these people who have been around the rulers of the world and the kind of rituals they do, they're doing the same things they were doing thousands of years ago. It's not really changed much. Yeah. And you, you mentioned another thing you said, um, let me see if I can find it. Um, you said that Thor was another title for yeah. Bell. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting because I saw the, the preview flashed up on YouTube for this new Thor movie. And the guy, the bad guy who's trying to destroy these gods which um, I would look at them as like the bells and the false gods. Um, it's weird that the super villain is going after them. His name is actually Christian Bell. <laughs> but uh, that's not where it gets weird. I saw that they put up on their title of, of their video while it's playing, In Gods We Trust. Yeah, I and, think it's funny. I always wondered why celebrities change their names, like Michael J. Fox, all these different people. And you go back and find out that wasn't their birth name. And I always thought it was odd, like, why does a celebrity, and it's like, oh, well, they need a name that has star appeal. But I think there's more to that. I think it's how, like, when uh, the disciples were given different names, different titles. I think mm -hmm. there's a, a, an occult side to that, too. These people being given different names, and they usually represent some ancient deity or some, you'll, you'll find out that they all kind of dedicated to someone. Yeah. Oh, there he is, Christian Bell. That was his slogan, and all gods will die. Yeah, he's the bad guy. Um, and Thor... His last he name. He was great in Batman, though. Yeah, he was. Christian Bell was pretty good <laughs> in Batman. Um, <laughs> Thor, uh, Odinson. His last name is Odin Son because he's Odin's son, and Odin is this leader. I don't know why it's cutting that off. This uh, leader of the possessed. Somehow my slides are overlapping. Something's wrong. Um, and that's where Odin is. Where we actually get because the way it was pronounced, Woden, in the, its original language is where we get Wednesday from, and Thor's day is Thursday. So two days of our week after these false gods. At least Saturday's not yeah. anything bad. <laughs> yeah, so we've got all of this stuff, and um, the right eye, the right eye stuff that you guys see in the Hollywood um, symbols and symbology that they put out there. It, it reminded me of a verse. Is that the verse you were talking about, the right eye being darkened? I always thought it said utterly destroyed, but it, it does. There are different translations. Different translations. Say utterly dismayed yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Uh, to the idle shepherd. And you read that word idle, and I'm thinking like not moving, but idle. It's like I D O L, mm -hmm. like an actual idol um, that leaves the flock. And sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. So, uh, yeah, there he is. Just like his, his father, Odin, who had the right eye missing, he gave up. I think the, the myths about that is he gave up his right eye for wisdom and all this stuff kind of like selling your soul. He had to make a sacrifice because that's what they, these unclean spirits like for people to do is make a lot of these sacrifices. And uh, I think I deleted, I must've deleted some of the slides because I had some more of the stuff with Thor who in this new one, in this new movie, let's see if I can find it. That slide again. Sorry. These little things are small. His wife is like a clone of him. And, and with bell, who's also Thor, um, his wives, all of their wives are always a mirror image of themselves, kind of 
kind of weird. So she looks just like him. She can carry the hammer. She's got the same suit and all that. Can't make this stuff up. And um, <clears throat> But his video, Wickedness in High Places, we're going to get into the high places stuff here. Um, that had me interested because what are these high places? And uh, I've been looking into that because there's a lot of these things. You see those um, obelisk popping up everywhere. They're in, they're in, there's the Washington Monument, and there's a, 13 of them in Rome, of course, in Rome. And when I'm looking at them, I thought, oh, they made their own. They wanted to kind of be like Egypt, kind of how we copy Rome. But no, they were many, many years ago, hundreds of years ago, transporting them directly from these temples to these false gods in Egypt to places like Rome, France and assembling them just like we got our statue of liberty from france they would they would put these strict orders you're going to bring this here and if this thing breaks you're going to die like you have to get this here this wasn't like they had these nice fancy barges with smooth paved roads like we have now like i couldn't imagine moving these massive monuments from those places but it was that important to them to be like these people who had these high places and the high places, I don't know, what were the high places? Were they obelisk? Do you have any understanding? Like, what was that? Because the kings, it would say they would leave these high places. Well, there they wasn't destroyed. Yeah, there were, um, historical digs have uncovered mass child graves from child sacrifice and things like that. And the wealthy, wealthy families back in biblical times were, there was no secret really about it. I don't think it was as taboo or as secret back then. Maybe it was, I don't know. But they were... Um, sacrificing their children and, and originally these these wealthy elites thousands of years ago would sacrifice their own children but that became something that they didn't really want to do so they started trying to find children that were kind of outcast children that were homeless and they were sacrificing other people's children eventually and it became that became more common but um they would go to what they the place where they were doing these sacrifices and these rituals was called the high places and uh you know, I think in a lot of times it was up in an actual elevation and up in a mountaintop or somewhere because they were trying to be secretive about it. I think to mm -hmm. a certain extent, they didn't want probably the whole world knowing exactly what they were doing. Uh, yeah, that that's what the reason that I got interested in the high places is because these kings for generation, king after king, Solomon came right after David. You know, David did right, except for the time that he took the man's wife and coveted. You know, he broke the law there. Um, he did bad and was punished for that. But Solomon, his son, came in and did good, it says. But it says only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And as you go on, I'm not going to read all this. I started compiling all the different things from the kings. And it says they also built them high places with Rehoboam. Um, councils, let me see over here. I'm sure somewhere it mentions yeah, at the very end of um, the one with Jeroboam. It says of the high places which he had made. So they were making these high places. Um, Abijam, or Abiyam, however you would say his name, um, he walked in all the sins of his father. Same thing. I'm pretty sure he kept the high places. Um, Asa, he did good, it says. He was doing right in the eyes of the Lord. However, when you get to the very end, it says, but the high places were not removed. Again, another king, Jehoshaphat, you have doing good in the eyes of the Lord, nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. They just left them there. And the people, and it might have been to make the people happy because the people have to have their false God. They have to have their false teachings like you see now. Um, and they were burning incense in these places. And again, Nadab and Baasha, have you said their names? Same thing. Keeping those high places, doing the same things that their parents did, passed on generation to generation, king after king after king, after king. <laughs> I started doing this, and I'm like, is there ever going to be a king who's just going to wipe out these high places? And finally, after Ahab, this is where Elijah comes into the mix. He marries Jezebel and does all the bad things. Um, but her last name actually was paying tribute, to, or her name, Jezebel, was paying tribute to him. Um, you have Hezekiah coming in, finally, after all these bad kings, and Elijah does the, thing, does the things that he does. Um, Hezekiah comes in, he removes the high places, and he even destroyed, you, ever, you remember the serpent that Moses put on the, the pole, the, the brass serpent? Um, he destroyed that. People were worshiping the serpent as a god, and that was never the purpose of this serpent. 
it was something symbolic of things to come and people worshiped worshiped this thing as a god burnt incense to it i'm sure did all the different things and so i thought wow i never knew that we had an answer to what happened to that brass serpent did they throw it away did they put it on a shelf the people kept it they wanted their their um, physical object to worship instead of worshiping the father in spirit and in truth and i thought it was crazy that hezekiah i thought it was cool hezekiah when the world tried to come in and take over and he prayed that it wouldn't happen the father destroyed the people that were his enemy 185,000 of them or he wow. not the father actually an angel of the lord it says um went out there and slayed them 185,000 that's a lot a lot of corpses when they woke when uh sun came up so yeah then i talked about this when i was talking to tony the other day we went and read through um josiah he also removed high places so he was another one that came after him leading the way leading the way for what would soon be but yeah that was that was a quick snapshot of all the people keeping these high places and why the high places are significant and that's why i think they shipped these big obelisks in i think they were part of the high places could be why we have those obelisk shaped things on top of churches now I don't know. I haven't looked too much into this. That's why I wanted to study these things together. Let me see if I can find where we were. I lost my slides. I'm looking at miniature pictures here. Hold on. Zoom in. There it is. Okay. So, yeah, here they are. Here is some of the ones around the world. There's 10 major ones, like 10 giant ones. And as you can see at the bottom, it tell, I put where they're from, the one in Rome, or in D.C., we made that one. We cared so much about these high places that um, our forefathers, they call them, had this thing put up right there at the, at the Capitol, District of Columbia. Rome and the Vatican, I find it interesting, the Vatican gets its name from Vatica, this like goddess of the underworld, weird stuff. But it's a 4,000-year-old Egyptian obelisk that they transported, 4,000 years old. I think it's ancient. Hmm. And then Luxor, it's, it's in uh, France. It's also transported from Egypt. And what really is interesting, because you have the rest of them again, one's in Argentina and the last one transported to Rome from Egypt as well. Um, there's some more. Let me go to the next picture. Where'd it go? It's an old coin of the high place. But right there behind this thing, the one that they transported from Egypt, they have a massive looking obelisk and it's called the Eiffel Tower. I never looked at that thing as an obelisk, and now I'm like, now that's all yeah. I can see. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm looking too much into that, but even the base kind of looks looks the same. And this thing is world famous. Like, everybody wants to go there. I've been there. We got to climb the tower. I thought it was cool. I thought, you know, somebody built this because of, again, to display their art, you know, and, and do their things and be creative. Yet, there it is. What do you think, bro? Eh, just an Eiffel Tower to me. <laughs> just the Eiffel Tower. No biggie. They're not copying there. The wisdom of the fallen there whatsoever. Yeah. So really cool stuff. But we were talking about these um these superheroes and sort of like how they how they base a lot of them on their false gods. And me and me and my bro, we grew up being huge Superman fans. It's so innocent seeming. It ruined my childhood when I figured out Superman was not even plausible. Mm -hmm. Could have just been a demon. Yeah, came from another <laughs> planet. They always came. They always come from other planets. You know, the chiefs of the stars. These things named after false gods. And uh, his name, Kal El. When you look at it, it's actually spelled with a dash, like Kal dash L, and L means God. So he was literally a light god. And in the uh, 1978 movie, um, what's it? Marlon Brando, the guy that has the voice of his dad, says, "I sent them you." My only son. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're they're playing on this Messiah figure. And me and him, that's who we idolized. We wanted to be like that. We had Superman pajamas that we wore every day. We wore the pajamas to daycare so yeah. we could transform yeah. into Superman in the bathroom <laughs> and come out and save someone. Yeah, that was that was one of, that was my my vision was me put having this the Superman pajamas under my regular clothes going Wait, was to that daycare freshman year of high school freshman no. year no. <laughs> this was age 4 or 5 probably 5 i'd hate to admit that i was probably 5 i don't know we were, i think no 4 it was before we went to school um, but our mom was in cosmetology school we'd go to the daycare and that was when we were superhero superman freaks like fanatics and um, wore these things like we said every day and i tried to sneak into the daycare wearing them under my clothes and 
I was going to go to the restroom, you know, like he goes to the phone booth, change and come out and fly around the room in my imagination and prove to everyone that I was Superman. Um, and thankfully, on the way out the door, my mom saw the the uh, sleeves bunched up under my shirt and goes, what is that? <laughs> and she caught me and was like, take that off now. So I'm glad she did. But the funniest one was him. I'll let you tell your story with the barn. Oh, yeah. I was I was going to jump off the roof of our barn because I thought I could fly. I had the cape on. I had the, <laughs> had the whole thing. And I was like, I'm going to jump off. And my mom comes out. And I had, I had to climb a tree to get on the roof of this barn. So I'm up there. And Josh was watching me. He was like, come on, jump. I was like, I'm going to fly down. And my mom <laughs> walked out. And uh, she goes, what are you doing up there? And I said, I'm going to fly down. And she goes, if you're going to fly down, why don't you just fly up there? And it was like common sense. I was like, that's a good point. I better climb back down the tree. <laughs> just flew up here if I could fly. I just yeah. thought I needed height. <laughs> but that's that's how much faith we had in our our superhero idols that we literally idolized. I mean, we spent we always, you know, we tried to do our hair that way, you try to look that way. And like we always wanted to be like Superman. And and it's it's good. He fights the bad guys. And so it does. And it's I'm not condemning people who who our superhero uh, fanatics, because that's what we were our entire lives. I just thought it, it's always interesting to look into it and see that I mean, they I still based like, them. I still like Batman. Surely that's not based on some pagan bat god, right? Yeah, it probably oh, is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Batman probably definitely it, it actually is. But who, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, we went and we watched. I still watch Christian. Uh, what was it? Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Robert Pattinson, Batman. Yeah. Three hour movie. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That was funny. And what else did I have on here? Um, oh, more stuff about the high places. Lots of the stuff. I'm going to go back, get back to what we were talking about earlier, which was um, that worshiping of Baal. If I can find my slide. Sorry, guys. It's hard to see all the stuff on here when it's microscopic. And How many slides did you put in here? Only 50. Oh, there's right. more than 50. Oh, there it is. Bel Air. Um, the significance of that that name, you guys know the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Um, I was reading in the book of Jubilees as well. I know this is I've quoted quite a few things from here, but um, at the first chapter, chapter one, uh, Moses is talking uh, to the Father. He says, "Let Thy mercy, O Lord, be lifted up upon Thy people and create in them an upright spirit, and let not the spirit of Bel Air rule over them." to accuse them before thee and to ensnare them from all the paths of righteousness so that they may perish from before thy face. And so I thought, man, spirit of Bel Air. And I read this, this is right around the time that the Fresh Prince of Bel Air slapped Chris Rock in the face and everybody was talking about that. And uh, Tony said, yeah, it's interesting. The Fresh Prince slapped the rock. The rock was what smoting, smiting the rock or hitting the rock yeah. was what <laughs> kept Moses from going to the promised land. Um, but that Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Bel Air, when you look that up, you see all those familiar words for Bel. And it's essentially, it says here, a term occurring in the Hebrew Bible, which later became personified as the devil. Wow. So Bel Air starts with the word Bel. So Satan worshiping, Bel worshiping, starting to look like it's more of the same. And then when you look at the extended version of that song of the fresh prince of bel air he says i sprang with quickness like lightning disappeared i looked at my kingdom i was finally there set on my throne the fresh prince of satan of bel air <laughs> and uh, where that gets uh where i saw the connections there was with luke where it says and he said unto them i beheld satan as yeah. lightning fall from heaven they took that part out of the one they put on tv i guess they didn't want people to Look up what Bel Air actually means. And in his name, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, there's a dash between Bel and Air. Hmm. Always putting that stuff in plain sight. So, yeah. Interesting uh, connections. But these um, powers of darkness and the wickedness, the cool thing I found about my brother's research is that we have the Father's power on our side, the Holy Spirit. Like when you look at the things that Elijah did in his in the Father's beloved son that he sent, <clears throat> that came along and did all these miracles, these unclean spirits being cast out, and they're not able to do the things that they could do to deceive when the Father shows up. And he was looking at testimonies of people who were under these demonic deceptions. They were Satanists. And before they came out of it, 
um, one of them in particular that I really like, uh, talk about that where somebody was praying for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. The guy's name was Jeff Harshbarger and he was, uh, and I could not, I tried to contact this guy. I wanted to talk to him, but he had, uh, he had became throughout just kind of the typical route going like with, uh, the Ouija board and all that type of stuff somehow slowly got involved with Satanism and came across a group of guys that seemed like normal guys. They had this hangout. It was like a lounge and there was like arcades and pools and pool tables and stuff. And he found out they were Satanists and he was interested in this occult type stuff. So he got drawn into it and long story short, became very involved and uh, was uh, moved into a town with one of the guys that he was uh, into this cult with. And he didn't realize that this guy was a former Christian and this guy's family or I don't know, he's really a Christian, but he was from a church family and the church in this town started knew what they were into and started praying for these two guys. And this guy, Jeff, was all of a sudden in turmoil. He couldn't sleep. Something was just off and uh, he couldn't kind of figure out what was wrong with him. He almost started becoming like suicidal all of a sudden. And he went to one of his high hmm. priests and he said, I'm not sure what's going on. We've come to this town. And, and he started explaining his symptoms and the priest, the priest of his cult said, well, you're being angelically oppressed. And he had never heard of that. And he said, what do you mean? He said, well, this town you've just entered, people are praying for you and it's preventing the demons inside of you from doing what it is they want to do. And uh, so the prayers of the people were actually interfering with the demons inside of this guy who was a Satanist. And he says that he comes basically to the end of his rope, because one thing you hear a lot when you listen to these testimonies of people coming out of those types of things is they start hearing this loud voice telling them to kill themselves, kill yourself. When the adversary knows you're about to see the light and you're about to be risen out of something, he starts really loudly telling these people, go kill yourself, go kill yourself. And I kept hearing that throughout all these testimonies I was listening to, but, uh, he said he went outside his window and he felt like he could feel God's presence. And he started going to uh, different churches and different uh, people that, of faith and trying to get somebody to help him and help him understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And he said he finally found a Christian family a, a, from a church in his town that understood what he was talking about. And they knew he was possessed. And he said they helped cast the demons out of him. And he said it was the greatest feeling he's ever had, this feeling of freedom. But I just thought it was interesting that the people who were actually able to do anything against this guy who was a Satanist were people who were praying for him, not against him. And I think that's important for us to remember is that it's not about it's not against flesh and blood. It, it, these people actually can be helped. You know, you see somebody like that and you, it, you would be easily to say that's the enemy. and We got to pray against them and we got to kick them out of the town. We got to do all this stuff. But they started praying for him. And there's power to that when you're mm -hmm. really Pray when when Jesus said, "Love your enemy." Pray for your enemy too. You know, if you love somebody, pray for them. And uh, that his testimony to me was really powerful. And and that's a lot of the Satanists. They had somebody in their life, somebody around them that was praying for them, and somebody around them that was trying to kind of reach them through the Spirit and came at them. They always said they came at me with love and said, "God loves you," and that's what breaks them. And that's what kind of because they they're they're conditioned to think God hates them. And their life was miserable before they became a Satanist or before they got involved in this stuff. And they think, God hates me. He never wanted me. I'm an outcast. These people took me in and they don't understand God's love. And a lot of them came to God because they were kind of showed that by somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's that's where we separate ourselves. We get condemned. We feel like, why would he want to talk to me? Why would he want time with somebody like yeah. me? And you're the reason why. He parted the waters, mm -hmm. the reason why he made his covenant with Abraham, the reason why he sent his son. He wants time with you, and he's shown us that time and time again. It's hard to imagine the creator of heaven and earth being lonely enough to want time with us, but you look at his children and what they've, the deceptions they're under. They don't even know what they live on, and he is right there, and they don't even know it. And so we we have to really, like, like the, like the, like the Messiah tells us, be a light. Don't hide that light. And I think we kind of get caught up in the stress of this world. It's easy to get out in public and just kind of hide yourself. And mm -hmm. like, like you feel like you're hiding your light. You're like, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be bothered. It's going to take energy. It's going to take this or I don't look good or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. Try to let that light shine. And because we, we get around you guys, we get to see a lot of you when we have our meetups. And that light is just like, it's overwhelming. I mean, it's powerful having that yeah. many 
in one room. And sometimes you guys are the only light in a room when you go there. They don't they don't know the father. They don't know his mercy and his compassion. So it's good to share that with your example of love that you have, like he was saying yourself. So, yeah, we are uh, getting uh, deep into this stuff. And if you ha guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Make sure um, put it in all caps. I've seen people do that and it's successful so you can see the questions better. Hit the caps lock key, type it up. Um, I had a lot of questions earlier. Some, a lot of people are asking if we are twins. I think yeah, we are. We look yeah. more alike now than we used to. Probably. <laughs> yeah, we're twins. Um, our our testimony is pretty cool. I want to get. Him, yeah, we're him actually identical, but we didn't know it, and we don't look. I think a lot of people could obviously say we don't look identical. We haven't looked identical. We looked identical up until about the age of eight or nine. Uh, but what was funny was we found out we were identical by doing a fingerprint test just kind of goofing around he, he does um forensics. forensic science and they had yeah. a fingerprint kit and that's how we found out we were identical when's the next meetup we need to have one really soon yeah soon now that the baby's here we can have have a meetup probably we don't have one scheduled yet though. i don't have one scheduled i like to plan them like a month in advance so we have or at least no no less than three it weeks would be nice to do time. one in july though that'd be yeah. a good time to have one Let's see if who I wants can. to host it yeah <laughs> talking about a meetup like your power just yeah i know yeah it's weird you almost shut off um we were, i was talking i did a podcast i shared it in a community post with this guy um from columbia and we started talking about bohemian groves and he's like i know this guy who lived right next to it and here's all the cool stuff he saw and as he's telling me that my internet <laughs> shut off and his internet shut off two different places at the exact same time and I was like, that's weird. He goes, it's all right, man. We've got enough. I, I, <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm like, man. Yeah, man. Me, and, me and him and one day interviewed this lady. She was a survivor of uh, the Bavarian Illuminati and that kind of stuff. And she grew up, her mom married into it. And she was sharing all these names, all this stuff, like some really good uh, information with us. And at the end of the interview, I was like, dude, that was deep. Like all the stuff she just shared, I don't even, I'm afraid to post this. And we went to play back the interview and it had totally been muted somehow. And we were like, well, all you had was us going, okay, go. And yeah. then it just cut out. It's funny how technology almost it just sabotages knew. you. Yeah. And he said, um, he said, he asked her, he said, can we redo this? Because the stuff that you look into that sounds like, man, that's a conspiracy. There's no way these, these people in these groves are doing these things, you know, Bohemian groves and all that. There's no way they're doing these things. Yeah. The stuff she said was heartbreaking because they it's really real. are. It's not just conspiracy stuff. It's things that are real. And she was afraid for her life. You could tell she was. She, she was, was very afraid for us to share. It. Yeah, she, we didn't have her face. We were just, just her audio, no name, nothing. And she was older. So she said, you know, the people that were, you know, keeping her in fear, a lot of them had passed on. And so she was like, I think I could do this now. Yeah. But um, we reshot it, did it again. He has the audio. She, but, she wouldn't, she didn't give me permission. I said, tell me when you're ready for me to air this and I can air it. But uh, yeah, so far she kind of, then she got scared after we talked about mm -hmm. it and recorded it again. She was like, I don't want to post it now. So yeah, I could imagine she, seeing the yeah. stuff that she's seen. I mean, these people aren't good people. Yeah. And they're the ones that are running this world. You know, the ones that sacrificing, doing the things they can to have the things of this world. And better to have it's better to lose the world and have what the father can give you than to have all that stuff all that material stuff is so temporary it's going to burn up soon um very 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 soon it seems like Let's see start i'm reading comments too now sorry guys um trying to see whoops it just all of a sudden shot to the bottom someone said rich witchcraft is real i don't know yeah witchcraft is real was, i don't know what else they said about it go back up a little bit witchcraft i think you're real yeah He's real books full of spells. Demons are real. Yeah. Uh, it's very real. And the people who are a part of that know that it's real. And every testimony you hear, the, the people who became Christians will go back and say, yes, it's real. You can put a curse on someone that actually kills them or makes them sick or destroys their life in some way. And we always think of magic as being something kids believe in. It's in movies. But these people, these witches in Hollywood uh, and, and all over the world, really, are doing these things. And they're they're getting real results or they wouldn't keep doing it. What, I like what Sean's wife uh, from kingdom in context, um, Lindsay, she said, if it wasn't real, he wouldn't ban us from doing it. Yeah. You know, if it was, if there wasn't something to it, he wouldn't say, stay away from it. You know, mm -hmm. if it was just a harmless board game, 
if the Ouija board, you know, for ages, children ages seven and up was just yeah. a game, he wouldn't ban us from doing things like that. The talking to familiar spirits and, but we have, we've got a supernatural protection if we're surrounding ourselves, if we're filled with God's spirit. And that's one <clears> thing. <throat> another thing that we always heard when we were doing that researching into that was people would always ask, can you put a curse on a Christian? Can you go after somebody? Uh, if you're just, if you're a high level witch or whatever you are, can you go after somebody who's a Christian? And they would say, yeah, if you're just a Sunday Christian, you just go to church, you just kind of play the part. Yeah, they could put a curse on you. But if you were spirit filled and you were legitimate, they said they couldn't get near you. They couldn't touch you. And there was no curse they could put on anybody successfully that was protected by God. And that was the only way they could be stopped. And um, this one guy, he kind of quoted a verse he had a really strong accent but he was talking he had became a christian and he used to actually put curses on people and he said he encountered somebody who was very filled with the spirit and that's what drew him out of this world he was in because he saw the light in the spiritual world and he saw how powerful this guy was against everything he had but he said they were talking about putting a curse on somebody and he said it, it <clears throat> goes back to you cannot curse what god has blessed and you cannot bless what god has cursed so if you've been blessed by God there and there are going to be people who come against you and it's going to happen at work. It's going to happen in your life. But if you're blessed by God, don't try to fight the battle yourself. And that's where we want to, you know, when when uh, somebody's coming after you and they're attacking your job or whatever it is personal to you, it's easy for us to try to go back and get revenge and strike back and do something vengeful. Uh, and this goes back to when God when. God's word says, pray for your enemies, love your enemies and all that kind of stuff. That's all our job is. And uh they cannot put a curse on you. They cannot come after you. If God has blessed you, have faith in that and have faith in God. And mm -hmm. he'll take care of these things for you. And that's where we need to kind of have maturity as, as believers, knowing mm -hmm. that, that God's on our <clears throat> side. Yeah, that's the same. That applies to the person whose comment I have up here that says they're being gang stalked by witches. Yeah, they don't, they don't like light. They go after people, whether you are in witchcraft and coming out of it or you're an outsider and they don't like mm -hmm. what you're saying to them. Um, pray right. in the spirit and pray yeah. it all the time. Right. Yeah. It's been, every, you know, it's just like I always wonder what Jesus would have felt like, because there's all these when you look at how Jesus prayed, he'd go out in the wilderness, he'd go out by himself at night and they'd, they'd spend all night praying. He was just constantly talking to God. And, and I couldn't imagine how supercharged he'd feel walking down the street. Imagine after spending a full night in prayer and just really connecting with God. And then just when you walk, mm -hmm. when you speak, whenever you're just he just constantly listening to God for what to do. And I thought that was such a powerful mm -hmm. example when you look at what Jesus actually did when he walked the earth. Yeah. He only did what he saw his father doing, mm -hmm. you know, that love, that, that compassion. I like what you said a long time ago, it stuck with me since then that he wasn't undoing his father's work when people were being healed. And you look at modern day believers when they see something bad with somebody, instead of wanting that person healed, they're like, well, God's will was for them to be yeah. punished for them to have this cancer or this. Why God make him sick? Well, Jesus healed people. So it wasn't God doing it because he wasn't undoing his father's work. Yeah. It's no. kind of <laughs> common sense. Counterproductive. Realize, yeah whose work he was undoing yeah, undoing the works of the enemy these unclean spirits that are corrupting all flesh that's why there's a war against us you know that corrupting of flesh that's going on now a lot of people have seen it and um it's it's gonna ramp up but you gotta endure to the end and thank you i want to say thank you kingdom within for your super chat it means a lot went to the right Looking for questions. You guys got any questions? I want to stay on here for a little while longer since I got my brother here. It takes a lot. It's a big act it's to get a lot in here. To, he lives out in the country, man. <laughs> this, we're in the same town, but we're on opposite ends, and he is way back in the woods. Yeah, yeah. He just built this house way out here. That's nice. Have to have a good place to get away. Flat Toberfest. I would love to if I. Oh can, yeah, that'd be fun. We really need to do that. Have to save up. I've heard good things about it. I've never been. I've never even no. looked up how it does. I have to get I'll have to get uh Smack Beavers in here. How to get him to pay for me? He he went last year. Oh, he went. <laughs> I think so. He went to the last one. It's it's really good to meet up with like minded people <clears throat> and, and just have talks. And... Yeah, yeah, it's refreshing. It's like uh, it's the one time you can just feel the spirit yeah. around you when you when you're talking to people like we are now talking to people who are out there who are soldiers, it really it puts you at peace because I, we're not comfortable speaking in front of people and um, being around you guys and hearing your testimonies and stuff and knowing that you're right there with us, it really gives us Somebody peace. Somebody said, how do we cast out demons? 
how where's it is up i don't know it just went, oh, it went like up near the top right there yeah um it's not by our power yeah <clears throat> and that's the thing is that he's given us there's a lot of uh a lot of people try to put an emphasis on the pronunciation of the name of jesus like if you use the name jesus it's not going to work or you know they kind of say you got to say it exactly how yahushua or yeshua or whatever the uh when you listen to people who like like we were talking about earlier who've come out of that world of of in, encountering people who were anointed while they were trying to put on curses and things like that they said it wasn't the pronunciation of the name it was the power and the authority by who these people were speaking because if you're speaking from god and it's from the holy spirit and it's it's there's going to be power it's going to be anointed and whether you say the name jesus or yeshua whatever you say demons cannot overcome that that authority from the spirit like i mean you look back to in the biblical accounts when the, was it the pharisees were trying to cast out a demon and they got destroyed they got ripped up and thrown out of the room and the, the possessed man laughed about it you know it's like who we know who paul is we know who uh, jesus is but who are you they used the correct pronunciation back then but they didn't have the power they didn't have the relationship they didn't have the walk they didn't have this the authority given by god they hadn't received that spirit there you go yeah, kind of like um, like Bell. If you've ever read the um, Bell and the Dragon, these unclean spirits deceiving people, they have different ways of deceiving people. They not they, they may not be able to do certain things um, like eat food, um, things like that. But um, the Bell and the Dragon, if you've, it's a short read. It's like you can read it in 15 minutes. Um, and it talks about how the king was like, how can how can Daniel over here deny that Bell is a god? He's eating all these food. They were sacrificing like they did to our father they're copying that and uh daniel's like all right we'll, we'll put it to the test you know and so um the statue when they put all the food in this room it would they'd come back the next day it'd be gone they're like okay this false god is eating their god or whatever was eating this food and um he sprinkled this light powder across the floor and so um when he left before he closed the door up and um, the king thought there's no way anybody can come in here and um when he came back the food's gone he's like see daniel He's a god. He ate all this food. And uh, Daniel's like, look again. And on the floor, there's all these footprints leading to this like hidden door that these high priests of Baal had had. And they're getting these free meals, free wine, you know, all the time, uh, constantly. Um, man, thank you guys for the super chats. It's awesome. Yeah, that, we gotta, um, we're going to be doing one on that life after death. Uh, the life after death. Yeah, we'll be um, talking about that for sure. Thank you, Tony. There's another one up here. Kingdom within. Thank you again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So yeah, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Kingdom Within and Sky Love, the Euros. I remember, I remember trying to when we traveled the country to Europe, trying to use Euros and couldn't figure it out. I'm not good with math. Luckily, my wife was there. Um, what was the question you're talking about? Whoops, mm. I've lost it. Oh no, somebody's just saying they couldn't wait to see the. One about life after death and hell. Yeah, we're going to do one <clears throat> pretty soon on that, right? Yeah, we're going to talk about it because somebody people always have questions. People are like, you know, I want a relationship with the Father, but my grandma just died. She was a non-believer, and she's going to burn for an eternity, and I really don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who that happens because my grandma was sweet. She just was a non-believer, and she mm -hmm. died. Yeah. And so there's a lot, of, a lot mis of misconceptions. Yeah, go back to John 3.16 every time because that's the most misunderstood verse, and it gives the... God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And those are the two options no. that we see um, throughout the Old Testament. There was always this idea that the, there was a flame and there was a fire, but the wicked always perished. And there were always no more. They were always burned up. And it says and, hell will be cast into yeah, the that, lake of fire. And hell is a mistranslation from different words yeah. in, in, in our Bible. Hell comes from Gehenna, the Valley of Hinnom. Jesus used that word all the time. And it was a place where things were burned up. It was a dump where things were burned up. In Jerusalem, it's still below the southern wall of Jerusalem to this day. The Valley of Hinnom, they took the word, the Valley of Hinnom that Jesus used and misquoted him. They just basically changed his words in our English Bible and used the word hell that wasn't something, no, it had never been mentioned in the Old Testament. So all of a sudden there's this new place Jesus is talking about. They knew what he was talking about. Uh, they knew there was a fire coming like in Malachi, you know, that was going to burn the wicked up, things like that. Uh, but, I think it comes back. We're, we're so ingrained in the idea that everyone has eternal life already, that we just all have an immortal soul. 
And that's what confuses a lot of people because that's what Hollywood shows us is that there's this spiritual body that goes up or down, mm. you know, to heaven or hell. And that's not biblical. There's a resurrection and there's a judgment and there are going to be people cast into a fire, but that's their final judgment. They're burned up. Yeah. yeah. Father is just, he, he is just, and his punishment is just, I mean, his judgment is what it's all about. And so the wicked will receive what they deserve. Um, it's always, it's sometimes it's swift. You look at it and, a lot of people see that Old Testament kind of wrath and they don't understand what was going on. Like we talked about the worshiping of Baal. It might just sound like a bunch of people bowing down to a statue and it's far beyond that. These people that he was sending in, his people to wipe out, they were sacrificing the children of people daily. I mean, they were doing these things on a regular basis. It was far darker than the G-rated version that we get. It's, yeah, it's it's only seen when you start digging deeper into the stuff they're doing now. Then you realize, oh, they were doing that way back when. It has not changed. And uh, somebody has a question here. I want to answer all questions whenever they pop up. My question is about the chemtrails. They're contrails, okay? No, just kidding. Um, these, uh, Seriously, they're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these things that we didn't see growing up that are now in the sky. Every single day. They don't yeah. take a day off. They have <laughs> seven days a week. If you want a job, go out putting out chemtrails, yeah. and they are hiring. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how much it costs to put out one chemtrail. What, what's the price tag on that to fire There's, up this jet and have it fly across the sky? With their purpose, it's priceless. <laughs> geoengineering. We'll call it geoengineering. There's no price tag for these people. We'll, we'll call it geoengineering. That's what they call it. They call yeah. it geoengineering. <laughs> Sounds safe. Geoengineering. They're um, saving the planet. They watch Captain Planet as kids, yeah. and they just want to that chemtrails are good. It's 120 <laughs> degrees over here. If it wasn't for them, it would be 125. Yeah. Never mind the metal particles falling to the ground. Yeah, I don't know if it has to do with. Uh, I think it's more of corrupting all flesh than it is yeah, any type is. of spell. I think, but it, it does seem like people are under spell. They, they there don't has notice to be. This stuff. Like, yeah, I kind of wonder though. It's so important to them to do this. What is it actually doing? There's got to be something big that we're not seeing. Hiding the firmament, suffocating yeah. people. Like you know, like causing things to slowly population control, like yeah. the guidestones. But it, it's again, it comes back to like Egypt when um, the people of Israel, the seed of Jacob. Um, were multiplying, and the king was like, oh my goodness, these people, they're going to take over. There's, there's just so many of them. You need to kill the uh, newborn children. And the midwives feared God, and they didn't do it. And so the father protected them. They, they, the king's commands were disobeyed for a reason, because people like you and I wouldn't be here, but we have to be. He's, he, he knows that not one will be lost. And so um, who, those who are supposed to be here, We'll be here in spite of the enemy's tireless efforts to do all these things, take out people, mass shootings, whatever thing they could do. Um, all these things, it's, it's the father's ultimate say on who gets to live and who survives, who his elect are. He already knows. He knows them. <clears throat> and Joy's in the house. I'm going to say hey to Joy. She made it to our last meetup. Finally got to meet. Oh, yeah, Joy. Meet Joy and her husband, Jesus. <laughs> his name is jesus and on the name tags yeah we had joy joy and jesus <laughs> david riverstone let's see he said they put sigils in the sky yeah yeah definitely yeah down here i don't know if you got Oops. laurie adams down there where did it go right here is that a touch screen no i, no. I need a touch screen. I, you need one dude get with it but yeah um i have seen really clear pictures of those i know exactly what you're talking about they're putting these things in the sky uh, oh wow there was a pentagram over sky's house sky love yeah <laughs> i've seen those many times it's a coincidence that's surely not Are, don't you remember when they used to teach us how to draw those in school they're like look this is the correct way to do it just like this you can draw your own <laughs> pentagram on your, you get a 100 you get a free pentagram you get a 100 draw this on your paper <laughs> <laughs> why are we so fascinated it's a it? star look what i can do you get a star when you do good yeah Thank you. Thank you again. You guys are a blessing. I thank you for the super chats. I didn't even see them popping in earlier. Um, Kingdom Within, major blessing, and Tom Foley, yeah. Um, blessed to do what we do, and uh, I'm wanting to do more. That's why I'm, I'm doing this. Again, not much hey, teaching. Somebody said, what's up, studying. coaches? Long time, no see <laughs> since DHS. Yes, I remember him. Yeah, it's rare. I, first time ever a student ever said, hey, I, I recognize We're you. We're not teachers. Don't, don't you cannot us, expose so. us like that on here. <laughs> they, might, they might fire us from our really high-paying yeah. teaching job. He's a fellow YouTuber. Um, it's really cool to see our old students waking up. to the There are kids at the high school talking about this kind of stuff yeah. all the time. And, and 
it needs to be a it's class. It's funny how you see these uh, like people who try to protect all the lies. Like, no, you can't be saying that's not true at all. And you're like, why are you? What are you defending? Who are you defending? No, just listen to people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it it's um it needs to be taught more to our youth, and they are <laughs> they are targeting the youth like crazy. I mean, that is we were targeted. We were all targeted as kids with this wisdom of the world. Yeah, it's why we grew up believing that you know the meaningless lies of accidental just everything's an accident you know yeah but share the truth with everybody you meet man everybody that you get a chance to slip don't you know don't be too overbearing but uh i've had some success with a couple of guys that i know personally that we got to talking about the word and sharing some things and they were asking questions and i'm like hey you should check this out send them a link and and i'm yeah it's it's kind of funny how people you wouldn't think would respond to it or like man that was really cool i gotta watch some more send me some more stuff you know and you're like yeah. Eh. I didn't know how you would take it. It sometimes goes over terribly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, what, when we come back, when I have him on, I'm hopefully to have him on again soon. Yeah. Talk about uh, women in the yeah, church. We want to do, do a talk. Any women that are uh, currently looking at speaking the word, we were all told to <clears throat> preach the gospel. Jesus told us all to do this. Uh, there's been an attack on women doing this. And uh, we got to, we want to do a kind of a live hangout and discuss some of the reasons why everybody should speak the word of god and the verses that are they've tried to say are that women should be silent in the churches we're gonna uh, we're gonna address why those are misquoting paul for one and why if anybody tells a woman to be silent in the church they're going against the very words of god who said that he brought his spirit on all people the brothers and the sisters and they would all prophesy so that's something we all need to be doing so yeah we are going to look at that and <clears throat> in pretty in depth and go over some scriptures that used to confuse the heck out of me uh, Luckily, God woke us up to these things because I was praying about it and asking God about it. And and it was like he slapped me in the face with it. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a good one. When are we going to do that? I don't know. I thought you said I'm, I'm trying to do them every. We could do it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, now, tomorrow's Father's Day. Uh, we have to honor right. our father and our dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't forget. Is it tomorrow? Is tomorrow Father's Day? I don't know. It's, I'm a teacher. It's the summertime. It's yeah. Friday, Saturday. I don't know what day of the week it is. It is Saturday, actually. Yeah. Today's Saturday. Yeah. yeah, we're off when we're off work. We don't know what day of the week it is sometimes. Um, oh, yeah. We were talking earlier about the Superman pajamas. I don't know where the camera's at on this thing. Yeah. There's, there's a Josh. With the Superman my sister pajamas. gave me that one. As, back in the good old days, me and mom, me and my sweet mom. She got us those Superman pajamas. I remember I remember not knowing I was idol worshiping and being so happy. Dude, and, dude, it was just a kid liking a superhero. Dude. It's dude, not that bad. We idolized this guy. Yeah, but um, at least he was nice. Yeah, at least he was for justice in the American way. And his name was Call L, Light God. <laughs> his name was Clark Kent. Yeah. All right. so, any funny twin stories or anything you want to share? Uh, been on here for about, how long have we been on here? An hour? An hour? Only an hour and 17 <laughs> minutes, bro. Okay, I got to share a funny story with you guys. This is totally off topic. But uh, this time, Josh, he uh, saved my life from a, from a bully. I was, uh, <laughs> I, our we, childhood was great. We grew uh, up we, in the eighties. We grew up in the eighties where apparently no teachers were ever watching us because there were <laughs> always these like crazy fights that would break out. And not one time do I ever remember a teacher like saving us and being like, here, let's break up this fight. Like they would have when recess was over and we're still fighting these kids. It is weird. But anyways, no rules. There was this, um, there was this one kid. He was like the biggest bully in, we were in second grade at this time. And, uh, there was this real big kid. His name was Ricky. And this is in South Georgia, dirt filled playground. We're out there and there was a group of kids. There's maybe five or six. And they always wanted to fight with me and Josh. And they usually I don't even know why I don't need, We were just dorky looking twins, I guess. But they would always try. To, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> but uh, what was funny was they would always come after us when we were together and they would try to fight us. And I don't know if they just didn't have a good strategy, but they would try to come at us like one at a time. And we could always take them on because they never came at us all at once. And I remember just thinking, why don't they ever come at us all at once? Well, one day I was at recess by myself and I remember I was swinging in a swing and I was just having a good time and I was kind of flirting with this little curly haired girl beside me. And I was going to show her how I could jump out of the swing and, and like fly really high and land. And I was trying to impress this girl. So I jump out of the swing and I land and I'm like turning around to see her reaction and I'm laughing at her. And then somebody taps me on the shoulder. And when I turn around, all I see is this fist just right in the face. And I mean, it, and it was this big Ricky guy that I was telling you about this big massive bully who just picked on anybody. He was like probably 12 in the second grade. And, uh, I'm like, I'm like, hold my eye. And I'm like, I'm trying to like freak out about what happened. And I realized I'm there alone. And all of a sudden, all these guys that were starting fights with us, there were like five or six of them. 
<clears throat> they were um, they were started surrounding me and they're like, where's your brother now? He's not here, is he? And I looked and I'm like, he's not here. So I kind of got really scared all of a sudden. And all at once they jumped me. And I don't know what made me think I could find him. If I, I grabbed a hold of this one kid and I pulled myself up and they were all like dogpiling on me, like punching me and stuff. And I pulled my head out of this stack of people and I look across and I see Josh coming out of the lunchroom. He's coming down the steps and I'm like, help. And my eyes all like swollen and black. And I remember he sees me and his eyes just get real big and he takes off full sprint. <laughs> little Josh, he was so tiny. <laughs> I was little, I'm but uh, small now I was little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he comes running up and I remember I'm just like getting pelted and I'm trying to survive. And one at a time, he's he grabs a kid, pulls him down, knees him in the head, throws him, grabs a kid, knees him in the head, throws him. He takes on this whole pile of kids that was attacking me because he was just, I guess, adrenaline or whatever. It was adrenaline. And, I was <laughs> we had seen every Van Damme movie, every Ninja yeah. Turtle movie. We were prepared. It all came in handy <laughs> in the blink of an eye. <laughs> but what was funny was I was in shock because I was like almost probably in the fetal position getting attacked. And he comes over here like a ninja beating up all these kids. And then it comes down to Ricky, who's like the biggest bully in the whole school. And everybody just kind of was like, <gasps> because Josh was taking on all these guys. And it was like, but here's Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. Uh, whenever, what is it you grabbed? A, a I just, traffic I, cone? I, like, no, I, I grabbed a rock. Oh, it was a rock. No, he grabs a rock first. Didn't yeah. you pick up a traffic no, cone? Somebody got me, no, no, somebody tried to hit one. <laughs> okay. But yeah, he picks up a rock and was like, oh, and he just throws it. And I remember it hits him right in the neck. And the kid's like, ah. Oh, and they run, oh, recess God. ends and the kids run off. And I remember holding my eye, trying to hide it from the teacher. And they're like, what happened? What happened? <laughs> but it was like, he was my hero. He destroyed this yeah. whole, it was like Samson taking on all. Yeah. <laughs> the, the next day we get, we get, we get uh, called to the principal's office and they're like, we hear you've bullied one of our kids. Yeah. He's got a mark on his neck. And I'm like, yeah. What? <laughs> and I, I totally made up a story about my eye too. I remember the teacher, what happened? Even the principal, when I walked out, what happened to your eye? I'm like, I jumped out of the swing and hit a pole. But of course, Mom pulls up in the car and sees it and goes, what happened to your eye? Who hit you? And instantly I'm like, Ricky. You know, <laughs> so she walks us into the office. And of course, his mom's there with him. And he's over there acting like he's a bullied kid. Like, they threw rocks at me. And they're... <laughs> yeah. It's funny how, how people's perspectives change when they think they're in trouble. Yeah. He became pitiful. But yeah, I thought that was such a cool how his... Uh, it, usually he would have probably been afraid to do oh, what I was did, terrified of Ricky. Like, I would have never went near him. When when your brothers are being attacked in your family and so it's it, it's it kind of takes a different different turn. No. But <laughs> he did that again though one time. We had this uh we always have these funny stories, but there was this really big I think he was an older grade than us, big kid with a mullet that was pushing me at recess and he kept pushing me and I and this was in first grade, this is a year earlier than that. And uh I said, Stop I said, Stop it. And and Josh goes, Leave my brother alone. He's like his little voice. And the guy pushed Leave me again, and Josh was like <laughs> Don't do it again. Of course, this kid's a giant, like, mullet redneck He just kid. had this big gut sticking out. I never yeah, and, uh, I was, and Josh, I remember just warning him, do it again. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hit you. And the kid pushed me one more time. And Josh balls up his little fist and punches this kid right in the gut. And the kid had this big, like, a beard. My belly. hand sunk in, like, yeah, 10 just, inches. It was, like, boom. Right into the <laughs> gut. Just, and the kid falls down crying. Oh, and tells on us, man. It was hilarious. Uh and I remember that the kid runs off and tells the teacher, well, when that happened, Josh ran off. And I was just sitting there like, what happened? And the kid comes back with the teacher and they start, who hits you? And he looks at me and goes, it was him. And back then we looked <laughs> identical. And of course, here I am getting in trouble because of this guy. Already getting bullied and he got in trouble. Yeah, I was getting bullied. And that the teacher funny. yanked me by the wrist. He said it was you. He saw you do it. Yeah. That's a good thing about having a twin. Anytime you get Oh, you got trouble. a twin story, Sky? You got to share with us. Yeah. You have to come on. We got to share twin stories. I told Josh, we yeah. just need to share twin we, stories. We've got all we got. sorts of, of twin stories. It could be a video. I mean, we've got crazy dreams and stuff, all sorts yeah. of crazy stuff. There's been some really funny twin stories that we got. Valley we of the Shadow of Death. That. Oops. I'll try to click on a, um, on a, uh, comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh was yeah. saving me every day, man. Yeah, it's funny. We, we ended up, we were little. We always got picked on, and then we eventually got into wrestling, and then he became like a bully and started beating up people. I was never a bully. I, I know. I stood up for bullied kids. It was different. He did stand up for a bully <laughs> kid. He stood up for some special needs kids one time. Um, they were getting bullied by this kid. Oh, my God. I don't want to go into details. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll incriminate him. Yeah, but he stood up to a bully, and it was, so, it was so funny. That was high school. I was old enough to know better. No, it was middle school. It was, it was middle grade. school. Yeah. Oh, somebody said you shared dreams. No, he, he, had, a, <clears throat> he had a dream. I, yeah. One night he woke up. He's like, "Man, and this is when we were in college." I'll give you the yeah. Time we period. would always we would live we lived about twenty minutes from our 20, 30 minutes from our college, and in the mornings 
we'd carpool together because we we couldn't afford to stay on campus. And he was like, well, we'll drive in the morning. But my class was later in the day than his. But I would drive down there in the morning and just kind of hang out at campus just to save gas. <laughs> and uh, one night we were I was I had this vivid, vivid dream that I was in the car seat. He was driving because he would always drive. I was sleeping. I had a late class. He had a morning class. So I'd be laying in the seat, passed out. In the dream, I'm laying in the seat asleep and I kind of pop up and he is driving downtown Chattanooga where we went to school and he's going through this intersection and I recognize the intersection and this white truck comes out and he's trying to cut somebody off at a red light and he hits this white or almost hits a black the, truck or black truck. He almost yeah. hits this black truck, but I grabbed the wheel in my dream. I grabbed the wheel and I moved it and I was like, what are you doing? You're driving like a madman. You're going to get us killed. And it was so real to me that I woke up telling him like, dude, you were at this intersection. You almost hit this truck. And I explained for whatever reason, I explained the, the dream in detail. And I'm like, you were driving like an idiot. I woke up mad at him because it felt so real. And then he was like, ah, it's down. That would never happen. Well, the very next day I was sleeping in and I thought oh, I did not want to, I'm not a morning person. I did not want to get up and go to school with him that next morning. I'm like, I can get somebody to take me. Mom can take me. It's in my class sitting until noon. I don't want to get up at seven 30. So I'm laying there asleep. And, and I remembered thinking about that dream and I got up and I went, ah, it was a stupid dream. Go back to sleep. 30 minutes later, he calls me and he was like, what intersection was that that you said you had that dream about last night where I had that wreck? And I'm like, uh, it was like High Street down there. It was like the corner of this intersection. And I just described it. And he's like, what kind of truck was it? And I told him and he's like, you're not going to believe this. He actually cut around somebody at a red light at the same intersection and hit this truck. Oh, my God. And uh, yeah, that, after that, I was like, if I had a dream, I was like, hey, don't don't go for a jog no. at three o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> so essentially more of the story. He should have went with me and did I what he did in the dream. Yeah. But he left me. And he was like, he was I, he's like, just in real life, he was trying to pass around this big truck and he didn't see that the light was actually red. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it was his fault. He should have went. I was angry. I was in a hurry. I had a paper to turn in. And it's one of those, like, if you don't turn the paper in, you fail the class. And I'm going like, you know, way too we, fast. We also had a bumper sticker on our car. or not a bumper sticker, like a plate, like one of those metal front. tags on the front. And when he hit it, it knocked it off. And it was one of those that said prayer changes things. Yes. And <laughs> and it, said, was, it said Christ is the answer. And I like, it had like the little something like that. It, had some, it was some slogan. Well, I was over there real bummed and it was just laying there right in the street right next to me. I was like, hmm, interesting. But yeah, that I hit the black truck. But it was funny. I, I T-boned this truck. It does a 180 and parallel parks on the curb. And uh, I'm like, I damaged his car. It's totaled. There was no damage on the guy's car. Like my hood went under his, like all it did was hit, basically I popped his tire. He needed a new tire. That was it. I was like, how? My car was totaled. It was mm -hmm. trash after that, but his was perfectly fine. <laughs> Crazy dream. That little Corsica. Man, yeah. that car was that so old, ugly, but it was a tank. The thing man. that would scare women away, <laughs> that car. <laughs> that was it. Maybe that was why they never <laughs> talked to me. That Surely that was it. Um someone said they share dreams with their twin have we i don't think we've ever shared a dream with each other yeah we have multiple times <laughs> i used to have recurring no, dreams though that you no said. we always show up dressed alike that's our yeah. curse <laughs> everyone's like what do y'all do that on purpose yeah oh who got us into making the channel somebody said they just found us who got us into that. making the channel actually i got in trouble <laughs> i was he did i um i had a, another channel and I was like, I'm going to put biblical teachings on here, expose all these false teachings about our father, because I was having miracles happen in my life. I already and, had one and, big yeah, miracle. And he started doing yeah. stuff about evolution and, and the stuff like that. And he got called in at work and they, they were like, you cannot do this. You can't put your face on this channel. And this was right about the time we discovered the flat earth stuff. Well, I was just and, bringing in, I was exploring the firmament. I was looking at it from a biblical standpoint and looking yeah. at proofs of it. Um, I had, didn't know we had footage this, of it 2016? yet. 2016? I think Probably. so. It was around that time, late 2016, early 2017. And um, yeah, I got called in and they said, yeah, it's about your channel. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, what? I have 25 subscribers. Yeah. How did you, How find, did you find it? This, this? And so I think I had just put out my best NASA fails video and I shared it on in a comment of a space post on Facebook. And I didn't know that my friends would see that. That's but that's how it works. They can Facebook see Facebook shows your they friends show your what friends. You comment. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. And so I think that's what got me in trouble. If I'm doing my uh, mental investigation, I think that's what got me caught. But yeah, long story short, I got in trouble and I got angry that I, I knew that I would get taken out of my science position. They said they, they couldn't fire me. I wasn't doing anything illegal, but I just knew that it didn't look good. It doesn't look good. If, for and if my boss doesn't want me to do that. it, yeah. you know, I respect them, but I don't want to be quiet about it because the truth is important. And so um, we were 
we were anonymous. We were kind of top secret on this channel for a long time, and then we just quit caring and said, you know what? Who yeah. cares anymore? Once, once the pandemic stuff started the happening, and I anyway. felt like you know time is running out really quickly, I just kind of was like, we don't need to be hiding anymore. Yeah. Um, if if I get in trouble for this, so be it. We we've, we've already we've um, stepped down from coaching, so we could devote more time to doing these types of things. Yeah. And I want to do them every weekend. And that's why I'm doing this now. I didn't really have a whole lot of material planned or anything, but I feel like that's the problem. I always feel like we have to have everything planned and everything perfect and then do a video. But we are learning together, studying together. You guys teach me all sorts of things. And um, it's just been it's been a blessing. Some of the connections we've made just because you guys in the comments saying, hey, have you looked into this? Have you read this verse? Have you done this? And um, I'll look into it. I do. We try to read every single comment answer every question. It's not easy. I don't get to answer all of them. Sometimes I prioritize with the shadow ban. It's almost been a blessing because I don't have as many. Mm -hmm. There was a time where I was commenting about, I mean, over a thousand times a day, re answering questions, answering questions, uh, responding to people that hated us because when we created this channel and things were going viral <clears throat> back when it could, and it still does occasionally, the father has his ways of helping us out with that. Um, but back when it was like quarter of a million views in three days, that's a lot of comments coming in and you, you really have to set and you'll get a lot of hate. I mean, death threats, cuss yeah. words before I banned all the cuss it's words. It's funny. Like we got, we got so used to trolls that it doesn't even affect us at all anymore because we realize it's demonic, man. It's, yeah. It's funny. They're usually, their attacks it's are not. Spiritual. Yeah. And, and once you see that, uh, it's like they're driven to attack you and they can do it all day long. And, and, you know, you, you, you don't want to engage with these demons you just want yeah. to pray for them and Get, giving them a smart remark giving them love almost makes them get more power so yeah. just tell them you love them say i love you start quoting scriptures to them <laughs> start, start you feel that way god's love you know maybe you'll get to know them there the love creation that yeah <laughs> and that's the one thing that really kind of silences them other than that you can't really hmm interesting also high places because you notice the observatories are always in a yeah, high places like, like the Vatican, and they're always Lucifer. in significant places too. They have to be in like old religious religious sites, like the one in Hawaii was that they were like that was their sacred ground, and they were throwing people out, and they would not say they would not cave to these people about building that observatory up there. Yeah, they so said, it makes you yeah. wonder why did they have to have it in that specific spot? But I think the people who are putting up these observatories, they know they're looking for signs and for seasons at appointed times. They're not looking. For galaxies, they've always they studied care. these signs and see they've always studied these appointed times and they've used them against us and that's why when you when you look at books like um in the old testament jasher and even in like books like that they talk about the kings always had these astrologers they always yeah, had when, these people when the messiah came they were trying to stop him they knew that it was that time somehow how did they just randomly guess it you know, yeah they did the vatican's lucifer telescope he, he mentioned that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, that's uh, that's that's what that stuff's about. They're not studying deep space; they're studying our firmament. And and crazy thing is, a lot of the people studying it probably have no clue why, why they're pointing lasers up there and studying and, <laughs> yeah. and doing these things. They don't know um, what it is. We had telescopes for years growing up, and our grandpa gave us a one. big one, and yeah. we were like, "Wow, now I can see a star. It just looks like it's in water." You know, like um, no clue that I'm looking at the firmament. We were obsessed with it, but. We yeah. we have this limited I spent view. hours trying to find Mars to get it into view, and I was like, it just looks like a light in the sky. It just looks like a light bulb. <laughs> I remember thinking that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it just looks like a luminary. Oh, wait, it is. Why do all these things? Why don't we have a clear photo of a star looking like a sun? You know, since they're out on the ISS. Yeah. You know, why haven't they? If they circled the Earth every ninety minutes, why don't they point their camera to the firmament or the deep space and just give us a time like a perfect just looking out? at the stars around the world, you know, make that a big, nice, beautiful, clear, crisp panorama, no distortion, no atmosphere. And that's you can't never... see the stars from space. That's right. You can't sometimes, sometimes you can't, depends on the astronaut. Can't space see is a deep black. It's a deep, yeah, it's a deep black. <laughs> and, uh, the Van Allen belts only affect us now that they've been discovered. Well, they went right through them. Didn't have no effect on our sales. <laughs> I love that interview. Did you have that in your, uh, yeah, in it's your in video? Final card. That was well, a good we one. went right through it. <laughs> we didn't feel it on the inside. <laughs> it's like, oh, that we, he's like, well, the Van Allen belts are this many miles away. And he's like, well, then we went right through them. <laughs> Maybe we didn't go far enough. Oh, it's right. It's on the way. I there. would hate to be in that big of a lie. 
um, I feel like there's some sort of mind control yeah, though, because they're so good at it, so good at keeping that straight face. Yeah, that's true. Patrick made fun of me for doing YouTube videos and hugs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Dang, somebody made fun of you for making videos on You'll YouTube. never get anywhere. Man. You'll never go anywhere. You do like Steve Harvey did. He he had a lady he, when we went to we, we got to uh, We were on meet Family the, Feud back in twenty thirteen. Yeah, we got to meet the guy and he said uh he had a teacher <clears throat> who um what was it? She said she, she said, told him she he'd never be on TV. Never be he said, Who she do said, you know that's on TV? <laughs> yeah. What do you want to do when you grow up? He said, I want to be on TV and his teachers told him, Who do you know in this neighborhood or this town or anywhere that's been on television? And he said, nobody. And she goes, exactly. You ain't never going to be on TV. <laughs> he said, he sends her a television every year. <laughs> yeah. He gives her a TV. How funny is that? Surprised she's still alive. She's, she's, nah, she's probably old. She's probably gone now. He probably just recycled that story. Oh, my goodness. Sky love. I thought. Thank you. That's a blessing. That's the Euros. From Europe. Where are you at, Sky love? Where are you located? Birmingham, Alabama. Somebody down here. Oh, Shelly. Cox, that's that's not too far from us, Birmingham. I used to go up real close to uh I used to go up towards like like I was going to Alabama to get back into my I was in this place called Dade County, Georgia. I used to work in Trenton. Golly. But Birmingham. Yeah, Birmingham, Birmingham is actually fancy. I always I, thought of Alabama as yeah. country, like sweet home Alabama. And I, I lived there for a summer and I thought, man, this place is too fancy for me. I, I don't fit in here. Everybody's too they're they're like higher there's it's like wealthier like i don't know it's just it's not like where we're from we're in georgia and it's funny how there's stereotypes i'm sure in alabama you look i felt at like georgia as the that. town we're at in georgia is more redneck than Bur we went to birmingham and i don't know what i expected but you see on the news all these rednecks coming yeah. out the school parking Girls lot in their hair school parking lot over <laughs> there looked like um a, a car lot <laughs> like there were so many nice cars yeah that's crazy and then we got Sky love said, you're welcome. Amsterdam. Wow. It's so cool. We have people all around the world connected through these satellites coming at us oh, live by satellite. Murfreesboro, oh. Tennessee. <laughs> we got Rico in here from uh, Tinfoil Sombrero. <laughs> yeah. I like that name. Uh, yeah. Murfreesboro, Tennessee. How far is that from us? We went That's there. That's where BJ. That's where we had that meetup. Yeah. Was it three hours away? It's about three hours. Yeah. Maybe a little more. It's worth the drive, though. It was a fun meetup. Seems like everything in Tennessee we want to go see is about two or three hours away. Everything's about yeah, except for Chattanooga, it's only half an hour. Murfreesboro, yeah. I was just kidding about the satellites. By the way, we are not live via satellite. We are live via undersea cables. Those things go everywhere. And yeah, communication travels fast. Two thirty-seven a.m. Where you're at? Dang, that's, that's awesome. what time I'm up usually. Yeah. Well, this is a cool story. When I went to um, the talk about time zones, when I went to New Zealand, we were 16 hours. And you were actually in, were you in Hawaii when I was in New Zealand? Mm. I can't remember. We were like, it was winter where I was and it was summer yeah. where he was. Because it was summer when I left. But when I, I landed in um, New Zealand and we went to Australia and visited around those two places, it was winter time. But I was 16 hours ahead of him. And so I got to celebrate my birthday. He's seven minutes older than me. But I got to celebrate my birthday 16 hours ahead of him. So it was nice being the older brother for once. And I was able to give him some wisdom. And, yeah. you know, when you're my age, you'll because understand. I'm seven minutes older. So I always tell him, <laughs> yeah, when I was your age. <laughs> yeah. He'll go, you understand when you're my age. <laughs> Knoxville, Tennessee. Seven, yeah, seven that's seven only minutes two hours from now. From us. I love Knoxville. You should be out in the clubs. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Have you guys I've been? I have. I just, we need talent, like the kind of talent you have. We we did the final card, kind of was, but, but yeah, not we really. don't have the we video want, editing skills. I've yet. been wanting to do something that's more of a, I don't know, I want like a high level documentary that reaches people that's very to the point, very matter of fact, uh, a documentary that mm. that does it justice, that's just, that takes itself serious. I, I don't not like the level of films and things like yeah. that. Well, I want a video. Uh, I want like a movie that reenacts things, the deceptions, the lies, Operation Fishbowl, Von Braun's warning, um, actual you know, animation versions of creation. We have the animated versions of the globe, mm -hmm. but like starting from the beginning and going through not a real, you know, I mean, just like this real powerful, um, why they lie question answered all in one swoop and how they lied, how they did the whole, the moon stuff, you know, all the stuff, just all of it kind of put together in one. Yeah. Somebody said, how do we contact you? How do you contact us? Mm -hmm. Um, our old channel name, flat earth brothers, 
at gmail.com. Let me see if I have yeah, that. Flat Earth Brothers at gmail.com. The old. There you go. Anytime. Yeah, there you go. Um, I don't get a whole lot of messages. Um, <clears throat> usually I check it daily. That's the best way to, to message me. Some people try to find us on Facebook. That's not as often. I don't yeah. go on, on our Facebook page and uh, check. But the links to our Facebook page and everything are at the top of our channel. But that is our email, our old channel name that we used to be Flat Earth Brothers. Those of you who are new, if you see that, that's why that some used to be. Were, some people were mad that we changed our yeah, name. They got really upset, but <laughs> I felt led to do it, and I couldn't go against the convictions I had yeah. to change it. He to, kept talking about it, talking about it, and I said, if it's on your spirit still, just change it. I mean, if no. if it wasn't from God, it wouldn't still be on you. Yeah, it was it was becoming stronger, and I couldn't silence it. And I thought, you know, who am I going to try to make happy? These people or the Father? And he has a reason. That, that word, flat earth, words, I guess, words, flat earth, might scare people away. I don't know. But... um the earth itself is just dry land. So it's not as technically flat and uh, the water is. And so that was, you have to give me a better chair. Yeah. Better chair. Too squeaky and it falls back. Doesn't it? Too, well, well, I got you some water over there too. If you want, I'm good. I drank water yesterday. Yeah. He's fasting. No. <laughs> yeah. Founded makes more sense. It's created. He founded the world and there's things to talk about. He founded it upon the waters. Uh, you'll see that word a lot. I had a, I have a presentation somewhere that broke down all the verses that support that and uh, could have had a way cooler name, but uh, I called it the brothers because of course I have him thought we'd do a lot more together, but life does water have enough fluoride in it. I don't know. It's fluoridated. Yeah. Okay. I went to the water Thank company. God. <laughs> the water company actually has a plaque. <laughs> Not kidding. I, uh, I went, I watched a documentary called the, uh, <coughs> the culling of our water or something like that. It's on Amazon prime talks about the fluoride and, um, I went there and the plaque in our water company says um, this was awarded for ha adding an maximum. adequate amount of fluoride to the water. I'm like, great. <coughs> I grew up drinking this stuff out of the water hose. Poisoned me. Oh, well, you drank that one? Oops. <laughs> Oops. This is a broken glass. There's a oh, is it right broken? It's yeah. trying to cut me. Yeah. And poisoned me. Drink out of the other side. Okay. But don't, don't inhale it. <laughs> don't you can't afford it. real cups that are not broken. Oh, yeah. I'll just catch y'all later, starting from the beginning. Congrats. Awesome. Yeah, you might as well start mm -hmm. over. We're just hanging out. We're not even talking. Yeah, we were just telling twins. And I didn't get to cover every topic. I didn't get to cover everything in the video I wanted to cover. Um I, I might make it a video all in itself, but I wanted to share some of the connections and some of the things and get input mm -hmm. from people because I don't have all the answers. <coughs> but I do think there's something to this bell worship and the stuff we're seeing now. Yeah, it's all it's it, it's in it's the high all, place. It's all biblical. The high places, hey, the groves. The book of Revelation is pouring out right now. So, no. yeah, you want to know what's going on now? Read the Bible. <laughs> People always say, oh, back in the biblical days, we are in biblical days. It's not a thing of the past. We are in them right now. And we are being called out for that reason. That's why a lot of you are here in this uh, censored area of the Internet, because the Father's uniting us. He's bringing us back. And it's going to be nice for a lot of us starting uh our next chapter, our new beginning. Some people look at it as the end. It's not, I mean, it is for some, they perish, but for those that don't perish or die the second death, it's going to be something we can't even imagine. Some of y'all been waiting till the end of the earth now to start getting your life together. You're going to yeah. procrastinate like I have. Yeah. The world's ending. Let's get our stuff together. Come on, guys. Yeah. Somebody says, I'll be, oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. We've got all sorts of talents. Kind of call it. He could be a cameraman, editor. He does high. His videos look really high quality. I don't understand. Like I always want to. Like I can get the fanciest camera, high quality, good mic, and it just looks like I shot it <clears> with <throat> a flip phone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I'm not tech savvy. I'm not. Um, I do like making videos, but here lately I've been going through a study phase as an answer to a prayer. I've been wanting to study. I'm not a real studious person. I kind of just like information fed to me. But you're kind of a nerd, so that helps. Yeah, being a nerd does help. But no, nah, I never was really too, like, like a bookworm. No, like, you were more of a reader than me and um, did better in school. Yeah, I learned how to read. He learned how to read. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he actually was um, more advanced than me in school. Second grade, I was a super reader. Yeah, because yeah, they, offer, they offered the book at pizza yeah. party. Yeah, and that's how he read all the books in the library. Back then? <laughs> For one pizza. <laughs> Show up at the pizza hut like, hey, hey, I'm back here. I read 50 books. Now give me the free pizza. <laughs> I got you to I'll read though. My arteries. It's for a reason. Uh, yeah, it is way closer to flat than a globe. Bending and tore, tear, binding the tears first for the fire. Yeah. 
All right, beloved children. Um, if you don't have any questions, we're going to get off here in a second. Um, any questions? Anything we missed? I try to read the comments, but sometimes they kind of glitch and move real fast. Raise your hand if you have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was hated when the teacher said that because I was like, my question is too dumb. I well, well, it looks like we got ourselves here a reader. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Reality construct a holograph. Yeah. Yeah. Many, many miles to go. I always feel like that. What's that? Who was that poet? Robert Frost. Many miles to go before we sleep. I don't know. I haven't read that recently. Yeah. I don't know. I read that like in middle school, but as you're working, you're doing this labor. It's like many miles to go before we sleep, before we finally get to rest. We got a lot of work to do. Just turn, just tuned in. You missed it. Well, I've started over. We'll start over. Common sense. It's common sense. What time is it right now? It's eight forty-five. Yeah, Eastern. Somebody asked if we're twins or both. Are we twins? Where'd they say? I missed. It was it. down there. I tried to click on it, but your screen's not a touch screen. I keep doing that. It says I'm a little dude to your channel. You guys, twins, brothers, or brothers. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. He's my twin. I'm not his. Yeah, we're we're twins by marriage. <laughs> no, we actually are identical twins. Yeah, we don't look identical anymore. His got, mom married my dad. He got dropped on his head as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was always much bigger. I was always the, the, the heavy set twin as we got older. Like when we got about 11, 12, 13, I went through this phase of being a little chunky. Yeah. And apparently I got back after college wrestling was over. I started gaining more weight and I got to like 180 and he was down to like 150. So we were like 30 pounds apart and people could just kind of tell I was the bigger one. But I've lost weight recently and um, people are at work are starting to confuse both of us. Like who's who, especially like they see us at school, they're like, wait a minute. Like my, even my sister principal, she's like, hey, Josh, when's the baby due? And I'm like, Josh. And she's like, yeah, when's your baby? And I'm like, I'm not. And she was so shocked that wasn't him. But uh, yeah, even my daughter was like, daddy, I have a hard time telling you apart now because usually you're the chunky one. I was like, chunky one? Jeez, I wasn't fat, was I? A little. He's sensitive about his weight. Don't make fun of his weight. Yeah. Just I'm sensitive about that. Yeah. All right. Well, we love you guys. Um, I don't want to take more of your time away from your yeah. loved ones. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for joining us, sharing all your wisdom. I'm hoping to do these every single weekend. Every weekend. Yeah, Joy is a great moderator. Um, yeah, thank you for taking care of the bots. I know some of you guys do this stuff behind the scenes. I've made a few of you moderators before, and um, it helps. It helps a lot. Bots are trying to talk to us? Yes, these AI things, whatever they are. I don't know. They come in and they just share weird links. I love Robocop. <laughs> yeah. He's trying They're to take it over. Yeah. So love you guys. The father loves you. If I don't see any more questions, we'll get off here. Um, been fun. I like doing these things. I'm always really nervous at the start and then kind of get to talk to you guys. And it, yeah. Father helps us out a lot with that. Because yeah, definitely we'll, shy. We'll be we'll be doing one. Don't forget women in the church pretty soon. Uh, we got some good good notes on that for you guys that'll yeah for you men and women both this is for all of us because there's going to be people have trying a, to silence us yeah they have, don't want to can't silence the voice of god we got to get it yeah how could we silence half the population hmm. the women shut your mouths <laughs> there <laughs> go preach the gospel <laughs> not you you <laughs> yeah yeah but it's on its way all right well stay tuned yeah stay look blessed. forward to it hopefully we can do it live you want to do it live i think live yeah we'll easier. do it live that's, live's easier. that's more fun I'll kind of go over your presentation, edit, yeah. edit your mistakes. Yeah. Out. No, I'm just kidding. I always make mistakes on my presentations. All right. Well, thank you guys again. Thank you for all the super chats. It's been an abundant blessing that we didn't never ask for, never beg for, but it does help. You can probably hear the AC in the background. My wife's like, you need Every to raise time it. kicks on and off your lights. Yeah. When, flicker. Yeah, if you uh, notice the lights flickering, we have a, a window AC, which my wife can't stand. She wants me to have this smaller unit ran up to the office. Because it gets about 120 degrees. We're in an attic, so it would get really hot. So she's like, you need to raise money for that. I'm like, don't worry. Father will provide. He'll be taken care of. And then here comes you guys making your, your chats. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Tony. Eliyahu, the inspiration to help me connect the Eliyahu, Elisha, the ends of their names. Put them together. <laughs> the front of their names are the same. And I uh, thought that was cool. So look at our interconnected word video. It's like, I don't know if it's just boring or just really shadow banned. It's only got like 3,000 something views. Hmm. So uh, check that out. Talks about a lot of the things in this video. Yeah. If you haven't seen it yet. Deep stuff. All right. We'll, we'll see you guys. Good night. Take care of your families. We love you. Father loves you. Remember your beloved creations of the most high. Go spend time with them.